Are you looking for all the benefits that like iCloud and Google Photos offer, but you want full control of your data? Well, today we are looking at Image, which puts us in the driving seat of how we sort our photo management. So let's get into it. What we are looking at here is my currently deployed instance of image. Now I have deployed this using Docker, Docker Compose, and it's just running on a little server that I have here at home. Now, if you're familiar with my content, that this should be no surprise to you that we are using Docker and Docker Compose. I am going to walk you through everything. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to have everything set up like I do as well. But first, I just want to give you a bit of a showcase of image so you can just get an idea if this is actually something you are interested in. So straight away, what's pretty obvious is that we have some photos, we have uh, image dashboard here, and we have some features on the left. So let's just get into covering some of these features. So straight away, if you're familiar with things like iCloud and Google Photos, you just get kind of like an initial dashboard of your photos broken down by date. So you can see here, I've got a couple of photos. Here's me at a beach, um, my cat George, here he is again, and my other cat Nacho. So I've got some photos here, and these are for good reason, so I can give some demonstrations. And I have just hit 5,000 subscribers, so um, put that there as well. So something that's really cool about this and some features that you get as part of like Google Cloud and iCloud is something like the map feature. So this uses like the um, the geo data like in your metadata of your photos to understand where the photo was taken and you can kind of, you know, get a cool time lapse or a high view of where you've been, where photos were taken and stuff like that. So I'm not going to scroll in too much because I don't want everyone to know exactly where I live, <laughs> but I can scroll in just a little bit. Everyone knows I live in New Zealand. Uh, I live in the South Island. So here I am here. And so if I was uh, visiting Australia, uh, you know, I would have little uh, dots where my photos were taken in Australia. Now, if you use Apple devices in iCloud, iCloud offers something pretty much exactly like this. Uh, I'm not sure about Google Photos. I don't use Google Photos, but I'm assuming they have something the same as well. So you get these great benefits and you are in control of your data. You don't have to worry about, you know, people knowing all the locations of your photos and everything like that. It's all under your control. The other cool thing is if we click explore, look at my lovely face. So it, again, this is a thing that iCloud has is that it identifies photos uh, faces in photos and you can name them so when you upload more photos it goes ha huh, I know who that person is and it will kind of just like categorize it for you so if I click here this is my face and it goes oh this is a picture I could add a name there we go so uh, now I can hit done and there we go so anytime I upload a new photo and it recognizes the face it will categorize that under my name Nick right which is awesome now so we've got again like I've mentioned we've got the photos We've got the explore, which we can see the people when the photos are uploaded. We can see the map. We can also set up sharing. So if we had albums, we could create a shared album and we could share that with, you know, our, our partner or some friends and they can, you know, all um, collaborate with this. And it's really cool. Again, a, a lot of this is self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go too far into it. Um, albums, archives, trash, all of that good stuff. You can see the storage of the server, see if it's online. Um, but yeah, that is image and a very high level view. So let's get into how we can go about installing this. So they have a really easy, straightforward documentation on setting up image using Docker Compose. Now, if you aren't in a situation where you have Docker or you, you just, you're not aware on what Docker is and how you go about using it, I have a link in the corner that you can go check out so you can get set up with just getting ready to be in a position to follow these videos. Once you've watched that and you've followed the instructions, you'll be able to follow these uh, steps as well. So what we're going to do here is that we are just going to follow these steps and also then talk about how they've got a mobile app. So they have a mobile app where you can upload your photos to uh, image and it's just, again, it's like Google Photos or whatever. You've got an app, you've got your, your server where you can interact and see everything as well. It's awesome. So let's get started. So I am currently connected to my server here. I've just SSH into it. This is just my terminal. And what I normally do is I have a folder called Docker. And within there, it's a folder that contains the Docker Compose file and anything relating to that container. And it's good to see that the documentation for image follow the same sort of practice that I do. They make a directory for the, the app where we're going to put the Compose file and everything like that. So we're going to follow the exact same standard I normally do. So we're just going to start off by making a directory called image app, which is super easy, right? 
So come back to our server. I'm going to go make directory. And it was just image app. Hit enter. Now if I do an ls, we can see that we have image app. Awesome. So we can change directory cd into there. Hit ls. Nice empty folder. Okay. So what we can do now is we can come back and saying, hey, look, change directory into that image app. We have, so we're all good. Now, you might, if you follow my other videos, sometimes we are in like a GitHub page or somewhere where we copy and paste the Compose uh, contents into a new fresh file. What they're doing is we're just going to be able to copy this command and we're actually just going to pull the Compose file directly down into our server so we don't need to copy paste or anything like that, which is awesome. So we just copy this back to our server and we paste that in. I didn't copy it, great, <laughs> hit copy. And then come back and paste, there we go. So we're gonna grab that file using the wget command. Now if I do an ls, we can see we now have that docker compose file. Let me clear the screen up a little bit. Do an ls again, and we can have a look at it. So, and this, again, if you're familiar with docker compose files, this is all pretty much doc standard. So we're deploying a service, which is the image server. Great, and it's gonna be called image server. And you can see the uh, image name that's been used and you'll see here what we actually have is that we have some like values structured like this right around like curly brackets what this is actually telling us is that we will be using an environment file to define the values here which just makes things really tidy and it's part of the next step so we don't actually need to edit anything in this compose file all we need to do is just change the environment files to you know tweak our setup if you want though, under this port section here, you could change the port if 2283 is already being used, but 2283, it's not being used for, for in my case, so uh, that's okay for me. If we come down some more, we can see that there's a image microservices that's been used, and this here, there's actually a hardware acceleration if we want it. So if you're familiar with this idea and it's something that you want, you can enable this hardware acceleration and it's pretty. It's in the documentation on how you can go about doing that. So I'll cover that in a second. And you can see here that everything is relying on this dot environment file for its values. If this doesn't make too much sense, it's okay. We're gonna be covering it in the next step. If we come down, there's some more machine learning. Uh, and Redis, uh, which is like caching, it just loads things a lot quicker. And we have a Postgres database where all of our data is going to be stored. Great, okay? So, and it's creating some volumes and stuff as well to store the data, even if our containers die or anything like that, our volumes and our data persists. Great. Any questions, ask below. I'm more than happy to help. <laughs> so that's the compose file. Great. Now. Like I said before, there's an environment file that we're going to grab. So let's copy that, paste, there we go. So now if I do an ls, we don't actually see anything, right? Because the dot environment, the dot pretty much makes it a hidden file. So if we do nano.env, it actually, it's actually there. So if you run that command and you're like, where is my environment file? It's all right, it's just hidden, uh, but it's here. So you can see here, all those values that were around like semi uh, curly brackets uh, are just variables, right, that we have to define. And this is where we define them. It makes it really easy. So if we want to change things, we don't have to look at that big compose file. We just tweak them here. So it's saying, hey, look, when you upload some files to image, where are we going to store those? Where do you want them stored? Now, if you had like a server, a dedicated NAS or something, you could point that to your NAS where there's a lot of storage or whatever. But in my case, the dot forward slash library is just going to create a library folder on in that uh, image folder that I already have. And I'll show you that in a second. The image version, we're just gonna leave it as release, okay? And then we've got the database password. So make sure to change this, okay? Even if you're running it locally, make sure to change it. And also the host name of the database, the username of the database, uh, the database name and the host name. You don't, as it says here, you don't need to change these values, so don't worry about that. Just change the password, where your directory is, and if there's a specific version of image you wanna use, then you can change this, otherwise leave it as release. Now, if we look at the next step, it's optional, and this is if you want the hardware acceleration. So if you wanted this, all you would do is copy this command, 
paste. We're going to pull the hardware acceleration file down. Clear that. Do an LS. You see, we actually have that now. So if we wanted to actually make use of that, we'd go back into the compose file and we would remove these three um, comments here. So this would then enable our microservices to use hardware acceleration. Okay. If, that, if that's what we wanted. I'm just going to leave everything as pretty much default for, for this case. But again, if you want hardware acceleration, that's how you go about doing it. Come back to our image uh, documentation and it's saying here, hey, look, just change the .env content um, and then we can run the docker compose up hyphen D, which will bring all of those uh, services with, that are defined in the docker compose file, stand them all up, uh, get the containers running and our service should be up and going. So let's go have a look. We do docker compose, oops, if I can spell properly, hyphen D. And there we go. Now, I already had the images pulled, hence why uh, the container started so quickly. Yours might take uh, a few minutes, depending on your internet speed, uh, and then it should deploy it. So if you see it taking longer and uh, your screen looks a bit different, that's okay. I just already have the images uh, pulled. So our containers are running. So how do we access this? So if we actually go back into the Docker Compose file, we can see it's running on port 2283. So all we need to do is connect to the IP address of our server on port 2283. So we can actually check on that. So if we go docker um, ps hyphen a, and we can grip this and do like image, uh, we can see that our containers are, so that's up, up. They all look like they are up now. So we should actually be able to hit this now. EP, and there we go. So we have now hit the, the image server that we've got up and running. So if we click getting started, we can now set up our admin user, right? So this is the initial user that, as it says here actually, uh, that can do all the um, admin tasks, create users, all of that good stuff. So the idea with this user is that you should just use this user for creating your other users. You shouldn't actually use this for everything because it can do everything. <laughs> you just use it for the initial setup, creating your initial users, and then, you know, leave it aside unless you need to use it for something. Right, so I've just put in some blank uh, default credentials here. So admin at testing.local, put a password in there and I can hit sign up. There we go. So if I do admin at testing.local, and then the password, there we are, we are now in. So this is image. And so everything you've seen before in the initial setup, you can now upload everything you want. So I can click here to upload your first photos or if we come to the documentation and on the left here and under mobile app, you can see that they have a mobile app, right? So on the Google Play, uh, their app store, if you are using FDroid, you can use that or there's the APK file straight away. And it's showing you a setup on how you can get connected. So as soon as you have the mobile app, you point it to the exact same IP address like we have up here on the same port and it should connect straight away to your image server. And then it walks you through everything, right? How you can select the photos on your phone to back them up to image. And as soon as you've, as soon as you've done that, you'll see pretty much what I showed you in the start of this video. But for the sake of this, I'll upload some photos. So I'll upload a photo of me again. So if I just refresh, there's that photo. So if I come to explore, there we go. Now we can see that it's actually found my face. So just like we've seen before. So that is pretty much everything to cover. So this image, so it's pretty much putting you in control of your photos and your photo management and all of your data rather than putting it in iCloud or Google Photos or whatever alternative there is out there. This puts you in control and it's very easy to use, has mobile apps, all of that good stuff. So you're not really missing out on anything. And if you want this to be able, you know, to be uh, available over the, the internet but secure, you can use something like Cloudflare. I have a link somewhere for that. So you can check that out as well. Um, so you can, yeah, host this and make it public but secure. But that's it. Yes, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for getting me to 5,000 subscribers. Uh, any questions, there's a link to the Discord below. So feel free to jump into our Discord. There's a few of us in there now. Uh, so if you've got any questions, more than happy to help. But remember, YouTube members get one-on-one -on -one support with me. I think it's like um, $2.50 or a month or $3. I can't remember what it is. It's not much. Um, and that will get you support with me. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.